What's going on my friends, Gaston Ray here and in today's video we are going to be taking a look at Catalyst Browse but more specifically we're going to be stabilizing footage together from my brand new cinema camera, the Sony FX6. Now let me tell you that I was a little bit hesitant about picking up this camera and as a matter of fact when the camera was announced I pre-ordered the camera, ended up canceling the pre-order and went with the Canon C70. Now the reason why I went with the Canon C70 is because that camera actually features digital image stabilization but also a lot of the uh, you know most usable glass that I like like the 24 to 70 or the uh, 15 to uh, 35 millimeter those glass actually have image stabilization in the RF system something that you're not going to find in the uh, E-mount system from Sony like the 24 to 70 or the 16 to 35 millimeter f2.8 you know those are brilliant lenses but they don't have image stabilization so all of my experience in shooting with cameras, you know, comes from mirrorless, you know, DSLR cameras. And I was a little bit afraid that my workflow was going to change, you know, completely. So that's one of the reasons why I decided to go with Canon. And to be honest with you, I really like that camera. However, after hearing so many great feedback about this camera and actually having friends in the industry that use this camera with Catalyst Browse, I decided to give it a go. And to be honest with you, I'm glad I did. So. Into this video, you are going to determine if Catalyst Browse and footage from cameras like the FX6 is a viable option for professional work. Let's get started. Before we continue, let me remind you that I'm giving away a brand new Geon Crane 2S and all you have to do is simply read the rules right here. I'm also going to be listing them down in the description. I'll be making the announcement on April 5th, so good luck to all of you guys. Alright, so enough talk and let's actually jump into the computer and start stabilizing some footage. Let me get you familiar with some of the options that we're going to have here because there are a lot of options but you know the software is pretty straightforward, uh, very reminiscent of other software that you probably use already. It reminds me a little bit of Lightroom as you can see. So on the uh, left hand side we are going to have some sort of a file browser so all the media that's connected in your computer is going to show right over here. In the center we have actually the folder that we're in right now as you can see I'm inside the clips folder and these are all the clips and on the right hand side we're going to have a lot of information regarding the clip and option for exporting. So as you see right there there's the I button that right now is selected and all this information that we see such as the media, the video, the audio, the device, the acquisition metadata. That's all information that Catalyst Brow is extracting from your clip, you know, shot with any of the Sony cameras. Next up is a uh, another icon that is going to relate to where are we going to be saving the file. And next icon is going to be options of those files that we're going to be saving. So one of the things that you can do here is you can manipulate the color as well of your clips and you can also apply conversion LUTs to your footage. In this case I shot everything in S-Log3 so I'm going to be using a Rec.709 conversion LUT. Then there is another option here if you have an account with CR Workspace um, you can log in. I mean I've never used that so I don't even know what that is and you also have options right here in terms of your you know hardware such as your graphic cards or if you want to use the CPU and other options. Now right over here it says color management it tells you you know the working space that you want to work by default so um, like I mentioned before I'll be using Rec. 709 but you know you can choose to use SLR3 if you want or log or ACS so let's actually go back here let's select the info button and as you can see right over there you know I, I'm selected in the clips folder and that one is under recent and that's because I've been working on these files before so the software remembers that. You have several options here you can actually select several clips by enabling this select button right over there but for the purpose of this video we're just going to do one at a time. Now one thing that I want to show you before I start is that you have several options here you can choose to work with the before with the after in full or with a split version which it draws a line there you can actually drag it and um, you know affect whatever and right now we're working with it before and after so the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to tweak this so you can actually tell which one is the before and the after so we're going to change a little bit of the uh, white balance in here let's make it a little bit greener yes this is going to be it guys so 
Right now, I have also the loop mode activated because these clips are very short and I just don't want it to stop. I just want them to loop, you know, once they finish. So that's really, really handy. Now, check it out right here. You have color correction options and this is what I was telling you before that you can actually manipulate the colors. You also have, as you can see, waveforms, histogram and vector scope and you activate it from the bottom there. I'm just gonna work with the, uh, with the vector scope. You know, I can preview the exposure. so. If I realize that a footage is completely blown out, you know, I just discard that footage, I don't even use it, move on to the next uh, footage. But what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna start stabilizing footage. And remember, the Sony FX6 does not have any type of image stabilization, nor I used uh, a lens with image stabilization here. The lens that I used here was the 24 to 70 Sigma lens f2.8. So as you can see, the footage is a little bit shaky and we're gonna click on this button right here, the stabilize button and boom. In a fraction of a second, Catalyst Browse is going to analyze and stabilize the footage. Well, let me actually back off because uh, Catalyst Browse doesn't analyze the footage. It basically reads the gyro data and applies an algorithm or runs a function there to stabilize your footage. And this is way faster than uh, the warp stabilizer in Premiere, for example, or whatever you use in your editing software, where it has to actually analyze the image, you know, different points in the image, and then it has to figure out which algorithm to use to stabilize it. And sometimes it gets it right, and sometimes you get a bunch of artifacts, you know, wavy footage, and a lot of the times you can even use the footage. Now, if you're shooting and you're moving, you know, your hands like this, you know, you had a lot of coffee and your um, your footage is very jakey, what Catalyst Press is gonna do is gonna read all the motion and correct it, you know, through a formula. And this is what you are gonna get. Now, check this out. I'm gonna hit play right there. Yeah, that looks like it's shot on a gimbal, almost like it's on a tripod, and you can compare the before and after, you know, before on the left hand side and the after on the right hand side. Now, the next thing that we are gonna see is on the left hand side top, as you see, you know, auto is actually selected right now. And that means that we are relying on the predictability of Catalyst Browse to tell us, you know, what kind of cropping is uh, right for the footage. But you can also adjust that because a lot of the times Catalyst Browse, you know, may overestimate or underestimate stabilization. And, you know, sometimes may understand a panning or a sudden motion that you purposely intended as, you know, a shaky footage and it'll try to correct that. So with that, you can actually drag the slider. And as you can see right now, Catalyst Browse is figuring out that 93.3% of cropping is you know what I need to stabilize the footage. And if you actually look at the footage, it's right on the money. But we could actually increase that cropping and stabilize even further. Now, you are gonna have to be careful because if you're gonna be using Catalyst Browse to stabilize your footage, you may wanna pick you know, a wider uh, angle lens to shoot your footage. So, you know, if you are shooting with a 24, maybe you may wanna shoot with, I don't know, a 20 or you know if you're shooting with a 35 and maybe you want to shoot with a 24 or even more so you can actually compensate in the cropping the next thing that you're gonna to have to keep in mind is that every time you crop you're losing a little bit of resolution and this is very important because if you're shooting in 1080p um, yes you can stabilize footage but a lot of the times you're gonna end up with a 725 or even less so this is great for you know 4k in my opinion 6k 5k 8K, you know, the more resolution you have, the better it's going to be for this case. Now, let's actually reset this, and the way you do is you double tap and you go back to the suggestion from Catalyst Browse. And if I would wanna actually export this footage, you know, I'm gonna stop this. I just go right over here, hit sport. It's gonna take some time, and you're gonna stabilize your footage. Now, I'm gonna click cancel so we can do the example with another footage. But one thing that you have to keep in mind is that if you're gonna be shooting motion that is going to have a lot of drastic movement, then you may wanna actually increase your shutter speed. Now, all the clips that we're gonna see right now are clips that have been shot with a 180 degree rule. So if you know I'm shooting this in 24 frames per second, so my shutter speed is automatically set at 48 frames per second, but if you're gonna have a lot of motion, you're gonna to wanna to crank the shutter speed, you know, something at around 200 or even 250, you know, something beyond the 180 because um, you wanna get 
the utmost frames, you know, in focus. Whereas, you know, if you don't do that, you're gonna render that motion blur. And when the software stabilizes, you're gonna see a big, you know, a big blur. And that's gonna look a little bit funky, you know? So keep that in mind, guys. I think that this is where also Catalyst Browse shine. It shines when the motion is not too drastic. Probably if you're gonna be moving too drastic, then just use a gimbal. But anyway, let's continue here. Now in this clip, as you can see, we have a footage that, you know, it's not too bad, but it's a little bit of shakiness. We're gonna hit the stabilize option, boom, done. And like before, you know, on the left-hand side, we have the before, and on the right-hand side, we have the after. Now let's actually try with another footage. All right, let's select this clip, and as you can see, you can always pick him also from the browser. Right here, we're gonna double click, hit play. And, you know, I'm actually trying to hold the camera still, but there is some, some motion there. So we're gonna apply the stabilization. But in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch right here, and we're gonna go to the before. So I'll let you see the before right now. And as you can see, there's a little bit of up and down and a little bit to the sides. I'll let it loop for a little bit there. I also see that the footage is a little bit overexposed there. So what I would do is I would actually now go back to the two up. I'm gonna stop right here, the footage. You know, I'm gonna try to correct that a little bit more. Uh, maybe drop the exposure a little bit more and make a little bit more, you know, mysterious, you know, dramatic, a little bit more contrast. And as you can see the before, you know, it's very blown now right over there, but because we're shooting in 10-bit 4K, 4 to 2, we have all this latitude to change that, and now this one is the correct version. Look how good it looks. Obviously, it can look even better if I spend more time, but let's actually now stabilize the footage, and I'm gonna hit the stabilize button right there, and done. Now, we're gonna go before. This is how it looks, you know, pretty shaky. And now I want to go to the after. Now, you're going to see a huge difference right there. Look at that. I'm dropping some frames because obviously this is processor intensive, you know, graphic card intensive, all this process. And now we're going to go side by side to up. And let me actually play this to you. I keep hitting the space bar, but in this case, the space bar doesn't uh, trigger the play. Look at that. Look at the difference between the uh, before and the after. It's very drastic. And you know, as far as I can see, and, and I zoom in, you don't lose a lot of resolution. It's not like the warp stabilizer where you know you start losing details. You know, this software is doing a really good job. So let's actually stop this one and let's do the same with another footage. Let's click on. Let's try this one right here. But let's actually click on stabilize. And again, it takes no time to stabilize. Let's stabilize the footage. Look at the panning. This is the great thing. Catalyst Browse is knowing that I'm intending to pan and not getting a same mistake. But a lot of the times, it might actually think that you're moving your hand, you know, you're shaking your hand, it'll try to correct that. And so far, I've been using the automatic mode. Now, if I want further stabilization, I can always increase this stabilization, let's actually stop and there you go. And as you can see, the footage looks even more stable right now, which is actually <laughs> unreal. Okay, this one is not so bad, but there is a sudden motion. And what I wanna show you is the percentage of cropping. And let's see, in this case, Catalyst Browse, you know, cropped almost 10% of the footage. Let's play so we can compare, you know, which one is shaking, which is not, which is very clear in here. Let me actually show you the before and after. This is the before. And this one is going to be the after. And as you see, there's a little bit of dropping frame. So, and as you guys have seen, Catalyst Browse does a pretty good job, specifically when the action is not very drastic or aggressive. Now, this is not something that I will use all the time because I think that there are still places for the gimbal. For example, if I'm gonna be chasing a person with my camera, most likely Catalyst Browse is not gonna cut it. You know, you're gonna end up with a very aggressive crop 
or you know, you're gonna start introducing a lot of motion blur in your image where the footage is also gonna result unusable. But the main difference between the Warp Stabilizer from Premiere, for example, or similar options in Catalyst Browse is that the Warp Stabilizer in Premiere is analyzing points in the image. So it's actually relying on pixel, not in metadata. And this is the reason why a lot of the times, you know, you may end up with wobbly artifacts and a lot of the times also, you know, making your footage completely unsalvageable. In the other hand, Catalyst Browse, a proprietary software from Sony, is analyzing Sony files and reading that metadata and basically reading line by line and determining the coordinates of the sensor in space and applying an algorithm and stabilizing your footage. Now, you have seen that it's actually really fast. You know, the analyzing doesn't take near as much as it takes in the Warp Stabilizer in Premiere. Another thing that I like about the software is that there's a lot of refinement and a lot of options. You know, you can actually determine how much crop to apply to your image because once again, it's a software and it's also trying to guess, you know, what you were trying to do. A lot of the times, you know, the software may uh, understand a panning for, you know, southern motion and would actually try to crop. So make sure that you always, you know, switch it to manual unless, you know, you like what you see right, right there. Now, you also have seen that we have grading options here in the software, and while I would never actually bake in the information or the grading from the software, it is actually a good tool to use in order to determine if your footage is actually usable. And you can apply some basic grading and determine if you wanna use it or not. So, in my opinion, Catalyst Browse has a place, especially when there is not a lot of you know, heavy motion in your footage, but let me know what you think if you would actually consider Catalyst Browse as a viable option for professional work. We'd love to hear your comments. Also, if you have been working with the software and have some tips that you can recommend to me and the other viewers, you know, drop them down below. And as always, guys, subscribe to this channel for more content like this one, and I will see you in the next video.